you're using Cheat Engine to give yourself these kinds of cheats, then there's a good chance that you are scanning these values every time you want to use these cheats. I know this because that's what I used to do. So in this video, I'm going to show you two ways that you can save your scans so that they work every single time you load the game. No more rescans. All your cheats get saved. And when you can save your cheats, you can start building up a huge list of cheats as you play the game. I started writing this cheat table for the game Dead Island. I have a money cheat, infinite durability, and a god mode. And I know that as I keep playing, I can create more cheats. And rather than having to scan over and over for the same addresses every time I want to play the game, I now just have them saved and I can start looking for more addresses, more cheats, whatever my imagination can come up with to cheat in this game. And that is an awesome feeling. So the first method is called pointer scanning. And a lot of people have trouble with pointer scanning and there's a good reason for it. It's really complicated. But in this video, I'm going to make it as simple as possible. I'm going to leave all the technical stuff out. I'm just going to make it so that you can do this and move on with your life and keep cheating. So every time you reload the game, the address where your value is stored gets changed. This is why it doesn't last every time you load the game. The address is gone now. You have to scan for it again, but the game knows where that address lives every time. You just have to find the map that the game uses to find that address. And that's called a pointer map. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a pointer map and then we're going to scan it and it's going to give us the map for our address. So every time we load the game, our cheat table can find that address on its own without us having to scan for it again. So the first step to finding your pointers is to get the address you want to work with. For this example, we're going to get the address for the player's cache. Okay, so we found that this is the address that writes to our cache value. Next, we're going to right click on this address and generate pointer map. This will ask us to specify a file name. We'll just call it cache one. And it's going to do this little loading bar followed by a second quick loading bar that just kind of writes out to the file, I presume. And now we're going to close the game and we're gonna reopen the game. We're gonna go back into Cheat Engine and reattach Cheat Engine to the new game process. It says, do you want to keep the address list, code list? Click yes. And as you can see, our cache value says zero. It's not accurate anymore. What we need to do is find that address one more time. So now we found the address for our cache for a second time, and we're going to create another pointer map for this address. We're going to right click it, and generate pointer map. We're gonna do it again. And this is gonna be called cache two. The reason we're making two pointer maps is because we're going to be comparing them to each other. And after comparing the two pointer maps, we're gonna be left with nothing but pointers for our cache value, and then we're done. We'll have our pointers, our cheat will be saved. So to do this, we're gonna right click on our newest address, the one that's from this session. And we're gonna click pointer scan for this address. And we wanna use a saved pointer map and we're gonna click cache two, the pointer map from the current session. And we're also gonna click compare results with other saved pointer maps. And we're gonna pick the first pointer map from our last session. And from the address drop down box, we're going to select our cache value that we identified from that session. Now doing this scan is just gonna give us every single pointer between those two sessions. That's useless. We only want pointers that are pointing to our cache address. So we need to add a filter. So before we do the scan, let's find how we can filter this. It only takes a second. We're gonna close the pointer scan for now. We're gonna right click on our address from this session and we're gonna click find out what writes to this address. This will attach a debugger, click yes. 
And this window will just show us any kind of code that is associated with our cash value. And we're just gonna loot some money in the game. And we can see here, this code showed up. This is the code that's writing to the game when we loot money. And the only thing we want from this information is what's at the end of this RBX plus 0000 BC8. That's all we want, the BC8. So remember that or write it down because that is our filter for our scan. So now we go to cheat engine into our address list, right click on the cache address from this session and click pointer scan for this address. We're going to select used saved pointer map and we're gonna select cache two, which is the pointer map generated from this game session. Click compare results with other saved pointer maps and we're gonna pick cache one which is the pointer map from the previous session. And under this address dropdown box, we're gonna select the address for cache that we found in our last session. And now we're going to apply our filter by clicking pointers must end with specific offsets. And we're gonna put BC8. And these settings here, whatever are your default, will be fine. Click OK. It's gonna ask you to generate a file name, name it whatever you want. I'm gonna call it cache pointers, and it's going to compare the two pointer maps together. And here it spit out over 11,000 potential pointers that could be pointing to this address. If you know your value, which is right here, 1101, that's our cache that our character has, we can click pointer scanner, rescan memory, value to find and put 1101 which is our value how much our character is holding and click ok replace the file and that filtered out over 2000 pointers that are not the ones we need so in this list of 9000 pointers that could be our pointers how do we pick which one is good now the easiest and laziest way of doing this is to just start double clicking on a bunch of these pointers from the list at random. And this is going to add them to your address list in Cheat Engine. And with this big list, we can just select all of them, right click and select add to new group. And we'll just call this cache pointers. Do you want the address version? Click no. Now we're going to right click on this group we just made. Under group config, we're gonna select setting a value to this entry sets same value to children. Now, if we go to the value section in the address list and double click on it, and when we change the value here, it's going to change the value for all of these addresses, which updates the value in our game. And we can now right click on this group, go to group config and hide children when deactivated. And that's just gonna hide all of those pointers and we can just have a nice neat cheat right there. But before we hide it and go find more cheats, let's just find out if this list that we picked was reliable in the first place. And I'll show you what that means. So we're gonna go ahead and actually show the children we're going to close our game and reopen it to see how many of these actually work. So we load up our game. We're going to reattach cheat engine to the game. Keep the current list, code list, yes. And we can see every pointer that we selected from this list is pointing to our cache value in the game, which is 1101, as we can see here. So this list is fairly accurate. If any of these pointers were to prove to be unreliable, instead of our cache value here, it would have something else. And that would tell us that this pointer is not good every single time. So we can just delete it from our list and save our cheat table. So the list looks good. We're going to right click on our group, 
group config, hide children when deactivated. And then we're gonna go to file and save. If you want to find a more reliable pointer list, you're just gonna to have to keep scanning more and more to get this list as small as possible. The important thing to understand with this process is that you can have many, many, many pointers and they will all be good pointers. You don't have to focus on getting just one good pointer. Just grab a nice big bunch, they'll all be fine. Now, the other way of saving your cheats is to do scripting. This is where things start to get pretty complicated. So a really easy way to get started with scripting is to learn how to find the code that's running in your game. And that's really easy to do. I'll show you a quick example. Here, every time my character swings his weapon, he uses a little bit of stamina. That's the blue bar in the middle of the screen. I've already found the address for stamina, so we don't have to go looking for it. If you right click on this address and select find out what writes to this address, it's gonna open a debugger. Now, anytime I swing my weapon and use stamina or regain stamina, it's gonna show me the code that's being written into the game as it happens. So we're gonna do one swing of the weapon and we'll go into our debugger and here we have the code that runs when we spend our stamina. And if you don't understand what you're looking at here, don't worry. The easiest way to go about cheating scripts is to just right click on the code and select replace with code that does nothing. It's gonna give you this warning, click yes, click okay. And now when we go into our game, anytime we swing our weapon, it's not consuming any stamina. So we just created an infinite stamina cheat by doing this. And if you want to undo that code change, you can click on the code that you turned off and click on show disassembler. And you're gonna see a bunch of codes here that say nop, 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 nop. This means no operation. You turned off the code at this point so we're just gonna right click on this top knob and we're gonna select restore with original code. And now when we swing, we are using our stamina again. Okay, so doing this does not persist through game sessions. So we're back at square one. We have two choices to make. Do we want to find the pointers for our stamina address, which involves closing the game scanning again, making pointer maps, pointer scanning, picking random pointers, or do we just want to intercept the code that runs every time regardless of the address and just save this code change for any time we want? This is way faster, does not involve closing the game, does not involve rescanning. So we're going to take that no operation and we're just gonna turn it into a toggle that we can put on and off whenever we want. And that toggle is something we can save in our address list as a script. So to do this, we're gonna pick the code that we already know works if we disable it. And we're gonna click Show Disassembler. Then we're gonna click Tools and go down to Auto Assemble. And this is going to open this text editor and under template, select AOB injection and just click OK, OK. As you can see, this code is the same as the one from the debugger, what writes to the address. And we're just going to replace this code with NOP for no operation. Then click File, Assign to Current Cheat Table. We can close this window, we can close this window, and we can close this window. And now we have a script added to our cheat table, and we'll just call this infinite stamina. And now anytime we toggle this on or off with this checkbox here, we can turn on 
our infinite stamina and turn off our infinite stamina. And just to show it works, we're gonna close the game and we're gonna enter the game on a new session, attach cheat engine to the process, and we're gonna turn on our infinite stamina cheat. And you can see when I swing, when I run, when I jump, it does not consume stamina. When I turn it off, it does consume stamina. And if you take your time to learn what all of these instructions actually mean, you can go and start changing some really funky things. One example here being that I changed how much money my character picks up anytime he picks up any money. So here I have $23. When I pick it up, you can see it says 999999 taken. Same thing when I loot a dead zombie for $45. It says 999999 taken. And that comes with learning a little bit of reverse engineering when you're doing this stuff. So now you can click file, save, and your cheats for this game will be saved. And next time you go play this game, they'll still be there and working every single time, which will allow you to eventually make a nice big list of all kinds of cheats that you can think of. I hope this video helped you to understand pointer scanning and scripting a little bit better in Cheat Engine. If this video helped you, if you liked the video, subscribe to the channel to show your support. I'll also put a link to a Discord channel in the description for anyone who wants to talk about Cheat Engine stuff. You can find me there. Good luck and happy cheating.